So we're really uh, pleased to be part of this chronic fatigue study. Um, this is a disease that's uh, fascinated me for, for quite a few years now since I've been uh, talking to Ron and uh, Jose Montoya and others in the community that have been uh, struggling to try to understand this complicated disease. Um, and we have uh, developed a, a pretty unique angle, which uh, our specialty is uh, T, T lymphocytes, uh, which are one of the prime movers of, of the immune system in, in all mammals and most higher life forms. Uh, and uh, T lymphocytes have been somewhat mysterious because they come in different flavors and they see uh, fragments of antigens instead of whole antigens the way the other part of the immune system called antibodies and B cells does. Um, and so they, they've been more uh, a more mysterious component and uh, spent now 35 um, years actually studying T cells and T cell specificities. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and, you know, there's quite a bit of complexity, but we, we have a pretty good handle on it. And what's been very exciting with respect to chronic fatigue has been that we have seen evidence of, of major T cell activity in the blood of chronic fatigue patients and, and compared to healthy controls. Um, and that activity has to do with what we call clonal expansion in T cells, that they, um, through a gene rearrangement process uh, that's shared between T cells and antibody producing cells or B cells, they create unique sequences for each, each cell, each clone of cells, and then that uh, sequence in the chromosome becomes the protein. And there's a huge amount of diversity there, billions and billions of possible sequences that are what you depend on for most of your immune responses, or it's a big component of your immune responses. Um, but unless there's an immunological challenge like a vaccine or a disease, you don't see in the blood especially um, the same clones replicating over and over again. Um, but this is what we're seeing in chronic fatigue patients. And uh, we've also seen in patients with other uh, other diseases, especially autoimmune diseases, this seems to be a common thing. Uh, we've seen it in multiple sclerosis patients, for example, uh, in a kind of a similar way. Um, and so uh, this is really interesting because it means that there's a whole set of T cells that has um, is reacting to something in these patients. And uh, we don't know what that is, but with the T cell receptor sequences, we can pursue and we are pursuing um, different methods to try to figure out what it is that these T cells are seeing. And, um, and what we're hoping is that we will, um, that they might be seeing a pathogen because that's a lot of what T cells do is they recognize particular pathogens and viruses and bacteria, parasites, and make a big response against that, but using a clonal expansion of, of the right kinds of cells. Um, and if you think about the immune system generally in the B cell and T cell world, um, the whole idea is you make billions of possible uh, molecules uh, so that if something comes along, uh, some of those molecules will be able to bind to whatever it is that comes along, whether, again, whether the virus or bacteria or pathogen. And in, the, um, in that response, uh, a key thing that happens is that the T cells that are specific for that virus or, or uh, bacteria or whatever uh, replicate and they make thousands of uh, identical T cells with that same sequence. So when you see these sequences expanding in this uh, clonal way, uh, you know something's up and, um, and that if you can track back that um, response using those sequences, you have a good chance of figuring out what it is that they see um, originally in the way of an antigen. And as I say, if that's a pathogen and that's a known pathogen, then we could 
perhaps correlate a, a particular pathogen to being important in this uh, disease. The other possibility is that it's a self antigen, maybe a neurological antigen, and that would mean that it's a kind of an autoimmune disease, that the T cells, you're suddenly making a T cell response against your own tissue. And that happens quite a bit. That's what happens in MS. That happens in rheumatoid arthritis, lots of lupus, lots of autoimmune diseases where this is happening. Uh, and it's sort of the immune system gets out of control and, um, and uh, for reasons that are really not known. Although one of the major models for how this happens is that they're confusing the self antigens with the pathogen antigen. And that it's thought that, in fact, the, the earliest event in the, the beginning of an autoimmune disease is that you start to make a response against the pathogen antigens and those but the, those T cells then cross react with some of your own tissue and, and produce uh, pathologies of, of you know, diabetes or, or uh, uh, MS or uh, things like that. That they just something something happens um, that you lose control of what is normally a very controlled process. I mean, we all get diseases all the time, and we don't all get autoimmunity all the time. So there seem to be some particular factors, some genetic, some environmental that that can trigger this in, in people that are susceptible. Um, so so one out one potential here is that these T cells see not only a pathogen, but they also see a, a self antigen, a neurological antigen, for example. Uh, and that there's a cross reactivity there that is at the heart of the disease. Um, that would be um, incredibly important in understanding how how this happens, uh, how, wh where is, what is this d disease? Um, and as I say, this is still, you know, this is something, it's a hypothesis, uh, but it is based on some very striking data that we have um, in, in seeing these clonally expanded uh, T cells. And, uh, but but it, getting to the antigen is, is a hard part. We have some candidates, but we don't, we're not sure of them yet um, in terms of what, um, is, are these real? Are these important in the disease? So we need we need a lot more uh, work. But um, it's great to be part of a whole uh, collaborative effort um, uh, led by by Professor Davis, Ron Davis, um, and that's uh, it's really attacking this disease uh, on multiple uh, fronts, um, and also by some some extremely uh, uh, talented uh, colleagues like Ron, like. Uh, Lars and, and and other folks. So um, so anyway, we're we're hopeful. I think you know in the research business you don't you don't know what you're going to find out until you find it. Um, and um, that the, the the art is in the quest and in in sifting through the data and and finding the data that really tells you something important about about the disease. But anyway, we think we're on the right track. Uh, very grateful for the support that we've uh, gotten, um, and um, and we'll we'll keep plugging away.